discuss Grady's article and on whose gossip he had based his false assertion. That was all the beginning. Now, Grady's article, uh, it's like a, a forest fire. You have a little fire here, uh, a campfire, it gets one tree on fire, and one tree, one tree, the whole forest. Th that's what happened. There, nobody, uh, none of these people ever said they read the books, they'd like to discuss it with us. Well, that goes, I'll tell you about that later. And, uh, and when you would ask where they got it from, well, the Brady's article. And Herr Langfeld from uh, Norway said he didn't even know she was a doctor. Now, the psychiatrists who told him that, well, they, they knew she wasn't a doctor, but they, they, they never read the books, uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, uh, among which were the character analysis, for example. That was forbidden. Now, now it's not. Now, uh, I just saw this just the other day. There's an article uh, in the Psychiatric Times. It comes out, uh, sent to all the psychiatrists and everything. And it's a commentary by Dr. Galen. Uh, Eric? And where's Eric? I'm not sure who that is. Galen, he's a professor of psychiatry at Columbia University Medical School and president of the Hastings Center for Bioethical Research. You don't know? Well, anyhow. Anyhow, he, had, he has um, talking about how, you know, with the Clinton's health plan, how it should, psychiatry should be given a, a bigger role but as though, you know, on the same status as physical illness. And he, he explains, uh, he gave a short history, like, uh, from Freud on, he said, Sigmund Freud, Freud decided that people did not have to be exclusively either crazy or sane, but that a normal person like himself or people he knew could be partly crazy. These normal people who were still in touch with realities exhibited only isolated symptoms of irrationality, phobias, compulsions, and such. Freud invented a new category of mental disease now called neuroses, now called neuroses, thereby incre vastly increasing the population of the mentally ill. Some 30 years later, Willem Reich said, one does not even have to display mental symptoms to be mentally ill, that one could suffer from character disorders. The personalities of even completely asymptomatic individuals might so limit their productivity or pleasure in life that we are justifying diagnosing them as mentally ill. Then medicine discovered the psychosomatic disorders and so forth. But isn't that something? Anyhow, uh, what was that? It was only the other day. He's saying that as a valid justification. Yeah, I mean, uh, he doesn't say... Well, now, now Dr. Wright's dead, so he's quotable. Probably, you're right. Uh, well, everybody, uh, you know, it's a pretty well uh, standard book now, isn't it, uh, Eric? And the character now is the first part. Uh, they do study it a lot, don't they? Yes. Yeah, sure. But the attitude The which character? The compulsive character. Oh, yeah. Now, one of the teachers made a point of saying that you could see in reading that chapter that Wright was already becoming a paranoid psychotic. Oh. And I, I, I didn't even go out of challenging him on it. No. He just objected, well, he, he only saw oncoming psychosis with the compulsive description of the compulsive character. I have no idea what he meant. Yeah, well. I could tell, right? The description Yeah, well, yes. All right. But this guy here, yeah, I mean, he, he, st he stuck it in, I mean, he put it in a, this main article, you know, this, you get the psychiatric times, don't you? And uh, I'd like to see what, what? Well, 
in, in such a case, uh, it, it would be wrong to challenge uh, that uh, teacher to explain himself? Well, uh, uh, no, sometimes you... No, I'm just, I'm just, I, I wonder, mean this one as here? a general, no, as a general rule, um, in a case like that, if it's proper or improper uh, to do one or the other. No, yeah, the, the, then you go, you, he, Eric came prove his point, and the other one came prove his point. There's no point. I'm only speculating, but this particular teacher was the son of a very famous analyst, a, uh, one of Freud's students. What, was he so, did, did uh, he so? I speculate that he heard things from his father, who must have known Freud. Uh, you wouldn't want to give the, his father's name, would you? Well, his father was Lindbergh. Oh yeah, well, Dr. Ike, I, I saw. Son, I, yeah. I speculated privately that. I saw. I saw pictures. Must be based on rumors. Yeah, I saw pictures of uh, Reich and Nuremberg. You know, when they were young and very much involved. To start in Nuremberg is a psychoanalyst, but also one of the people who was actively involved in spreading rumors about Reich. So yeah, yeah. The, but you see, the the rumor is still being spread. So when he doesn't ask. Um, on what basis do you do you consider him uh, becoming psychotic? All the people who are sitting in that room tacitly accept that. So there's a whole new field, a whole new crop of people who accept the lie how, how, I, I, without I, even knowing that there's I, a reason I, I, to, to I play. understand what you're saying, and, uh, and you, you know, you, you are wait, uh, desire, desire to stop it. You know, uh, you, you, you just waste a lot of time. I, I think I told the last time I spoke about this uh, example of uh, how difficult it is to stop the plague. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, I, I think I told it, about uh, it's in a small Swiss town where, uh, what's other people in? Uh, somebody start, some started to spend, uh, spread a lot of gossip, and really slanderous, and rumors and pornographic statements about people in town. And then people heard it and they would start telling each other until it affected the, the new one. And they, and of course, they, they, they were all upset. So they went to the uh, village priest and asked him about it. And he said, I heard about it too. He said, well, anything you can do about it, can you locate this one who's doing it? We think it's only one person. He said, I'll investigate. And he, he had an idea and he went to him and this man and uh, the man says, yes, Father, I did it. And I'm sorry. So he, he says, well, I have to punish you. He said, okay, Father, anything. He said, uh, the priest said, uh, meet me at my home uh, first thing in the morning. This is a Swiss town with the high mountains and all that. He said, but bring a scissors and a feather pillow with you. And the guy says, okay. Meets him there, and he said, now follow me. They walk to the top of the mountain. The wind is blowing, snowing, and all like that. The man looks at the father. He said, what do I do now? He said, take your scissors and zip through the pillow and let the feathers fly. And uh, he did that, and the feathers just flew in this tornado wind. What do I do now, Father? He said, I, I want you to go and pick up every one of those feathers from the pillow. The father said, that's impossible. And the priest said, that, that's the same thing with lies and slander. It's impossible to stop it, you know. So, so it's impossible to stop it. So do you try to stop it or not? You do try to stop it in, 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 a, if it, in a rational way. You Actually, Dr. No, I'm glad you said that, honey. Dr. Wright said the best way, and I still believe it, and I'm sure you all do, is to continue our work, publish our results. If they're good, that'll slowly get rid of the slander and lies and emotional plague, and also try to, uh, you know, help people in... Uh, and uh, preventing the newborn from being uh, distorted into armoring and eventually emotional plague and biopathy.
That's a, that's about the only way. We, uh, so it just it just feels to me that when you're present at a time that someone is making an inaccurate accusation, I think that you're duty bound to say where do you get that where do you get the information? All right, yes. You know, it, it, yeah. that's that. It, if you want to get involved, yeah, okay, you can do that. You'll find out that somebody told them. Now, what do you do? Do you go to the next feather? No, you simply say that it's you should make statements that you don't have firsthand knowledge of, and you nip that well, thing well, from one look at, there. Look at. You learned two and two is four. You said, how did I learn two and two is four? You said, the teacher taught me. Now, if somebody told you two and two, and two is five, or, or, you know, unless you have enough, well, of course, I'm just making that. But you, you, you try to go for it, get all the feathers, then you, stop, feather. then, then you stop doing your work. Right. For us in the field, mm -hmm. if Dr. Ike went after all the uh, plague, you know, all of uh, these articles and everything, he, he would stop doing his work. He did continue his work in spite of everything, and I, I was amazed. In the introduction to uh, the cancer biopathy, he apologized. He said, this, while this work is important, I've been going on, it's not, a, it's not as detailed or as exact as I would have liked it to be, but you have to understand that in answering or responding to all the attacks, right. it gets harder and harder to do, you know, uh, the work. Right. That's the point. So that's the point of the attacks. So, in other words, even if uh, the Germans who said, "Well, I, I knew, I knew that uh, uh, it was wrong, but I was, I, I just didn't want to get involved. I just didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to create problems for myself." Even if they had stood up and said something, uh, the plague would have uh, resulted in the Holocaust anyway. They wouldn't have. If people, having heard the lies and been present at the assault and uh, the abuse, had stood up early on, it wouldn't have made any difference. Well, if you read the Mass Psychology of Fascism, Hitler and the, the men around him, uh, the, they didn't do it all by themselves. What he spewed out was what the people already had in them, the plague so in them. Well, no, but uh, there were a few who, who uh, helped out and everything, and there were a few who helped out, and, and their lives, were, they lost their lives. But that's like saying that the, the people uh, didn't get involved because being part of the plague, being armored this, this, and for the, the plague, they wouldn't get involved. It, no, no, this is what, this is what they wanted. This is what they believed. Right. So what I'm saying is, when, when we're quiet in the face of the lie, aren't we just acting out our own play? In a way, yes. Yes. And that's advisable? <laughs> each individual, no, it's not advisable. Each, you know, uh, each individual has to decide. Uh, Dr. Reich, like he said to us at the, that, uh, that conference, he said, you know, this, uh, th this attack is going to not stop until they just smash her economy or get rid of me. And he said, uh, it's very dangerous. Now, any or all of you can leave the work right now, and I'll respect you, ex except if you attack me with them. He said, I'll, I'll smash you. Uh, nobody left. I think, yeah, two left. Who? Oh? Uh, later on. Uh, he, yeah, he, he did leave, but he, he, he didn't slander the no, word. He still, he still talks positively. What's that? He still talks positively. Yeah, him. yeah. Actually, the reason he left, and I liked Cod, he was very nice. Uh, he, the reason he left, 